Hello friends and welcome to another tutorial. So the other day a viewer, Chuckaball, asked me how you can make a cycling animation, like a wheel of a car spinning. And it's not something I've talked about in detail here before, so I thought I'd make a quick video covering it. So as you can see here, I've drawn a wheel, and you want to be careful with scrolling or rotating repeating images like this, because you might find it starts strobing as it rotates, if you move it too fast, which could show the wheel flickering or even going backwards. So to help, I've cut one of the spokes and added a board across another, which is something specifically suggested in an animation book that I've had for years. But more on that at the end, so stay tuned for that. So to make this spin, we'll use the Animate tool at the top left here. And don't forget the Animate tool works on the whole column, so you can only have whatever part of the drawing is rotating on this column. And the first thing we need to do is to set where the centre point is that we need to rotate around. And remember, you can't change this during animation, so to set it as accurately as I can, I'll zoom in close and then place it as near to the middle as I can. And next, before we add the animation, we need to set the type of animation interpolation that we want. And because we want the wheel to turn at the same speed throughout the whole animation, and not speed up or slow down at all, we need to set the interpolation to linear. So if you go to the File menu, and then down to the Preferences, and on the Animation tab, just change the default interpolation to Linear. And next we'll extend the drawing for the length of the animation. And then we need to set the first value for the rotation. So we'll change the animation type to Rotation, and the default is set to 0 degrees. And there's a few ways we can change this, but we want to keep it at 0. So with frame 1 selected for the column, the best way to key this value to zero is to simply click into the text box and then press the enter key. And you'll notice it's added a key to this first frame. So then we'll move to the end of where we want the first complete rotation. And you can drag on screen to rotate. Or you can click and drag on the rotation label to do the same. But as we know a full rotation is 360 degrees, we can just click in the box and type 360 and press enter, or minus 360 if you want the wheel to go in the opposite direction. And then if I scrub along the timeline, we see the wheel rotating, so you can confirm it's going in the right direction. So to enable cycling, all we need to do is to click this little button below the final key, and then we'll get this zigzag line to show the animation will go to the end of the scene. So now if we scrub through the frames, even after the final key, the animation continues. But if you notice, there was a small hiccup between frames 13 and 14. And if you look in the top left where the rotation is shown, frame 13 has the rotation value set at 360, and frame 14 simply repeats the cycle starting at 0 degrees and then continuing through. Now if we take a look at the values in the function editor, so we turn on the rotation value for the wheel, and you can see the keys are set, 0 degrees going to 360, and then the values simply repeat back from 0 through to 360, and keep repeating through like that. So to remove this small hiccup, what we need to do is set a key on frame 12, keeping the value 330, and then to delete the key on frame 13, that is 360 degrees currently, and then the cycle will restart again on frame 13, which will keep repeating. So let's move to frame 12, and again, click into the rotation box, and if you press enter, that adds a key using that value. And again, you'll notice that's added a key there on frame 12, and you see the key in the function editor here. And then select and delete the final key, and you see the repeated values moving up one frame. So frame 12 is at 330 degrees, and frame 13 goes to zero. So that's removed that hiccup. So now by looking at the numbers in the function editor, you can see this is a 12 frame repeating cycle. And this cycle will repeat for as long as you've got images. So if you don't want the cycle to repeat at the end of the scene, just take out the drawings. So for instance, if I delete this last 12 drawings and press delete, as you scrub through, the wheel rotates and then you see nothing. So let me show you a more full example. 
So here you can see I've drawn a quick sketch of a wagon and I've duplicated the wheel four times and placed them in four different columns. And if I just show you the schematic, you can see I've linked the wheels off the one wagon. So you can see I've put some animation on the wagon that bounces up and down and the wheels also bounce. But in addition to this, I've also added an extra bounce to the wheels so they don't sit statically to the wagon to try and make it look more realistic. And you can see by the zigzags after the last key of each column in the X sheet that I've used the cycle button to keep the animation repeating to the end of the scene. But if we want to stop this repeating, we've got two choices. The first is to break up your animation so that this scene ends with a repeating animation and start the next one without the cycle. And the second choice is to use the same scene but to remove the exposure of drawings in these columns and add static drawings in a different column. So you can see the animation here goes up to frame 60. And to the right, I've added the same images into new columns but without any animation. So if I change the end of the animation to be down here, then when I play it, you see the wagon bouncing along until it gets to frame 61 and then it stops moving. If I scrub through it, you can see that's happening here. So that's a quick run through of the cycle option and how you might use it. Why not give it a go yourself and see how cycling can help you? So I mentioned earlier, you want to be careful about strobing when you've got a fast moving piece of animation. And this is one of the many things I learned from the book Timing for Animation by Harold Whittaker and John Hallas, and why I'm happy to recommend it to new animators. It also covers all sorts of timing issues in animating, including effects, bird flight, animating in perspective, different types of walks, both two-legged and four. It covers all the animation principles and so much more. So I'll mention this not only because of the tip I use for this animation, but I've also recently put together a list of animation books that I own that I'd like to recommend to you. And in the description, you can see a link to all my kit, which includes these animation and drawing books, as well as the tablet I currently use and a cheaper tablet that I'd buy today if I was after a more portable one. So do take a look and see if you agree with my recommendations. And you never know, you might find something useful in there, so it's well worth a look. And if you're wondering, the links for my kit site are affiliate links if you follow them to the UK or US Amazon pages, which means that if you decide to buy something while you're there, I'll get a small commission. And it's not much, but it will help me build the channel. But don't worry, you won't pay any extra. But if you want to help the channel further, you can always follow the next link in the description to buy me a coffee. Or even... A Darren Tea.